to run on jobs. People were talking about state sovereignty. People were talking about health care. People were talking about cap and trade. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, right here in this district, I've had two situations with jobs. And I'm not even an elected official, but I had to go help some people with it. There was a man down in St. Clair. He owns a small business. He has three people working for him, and, and he's the fourth. And they, they're, it's a carpentry, and I'll don't go any further into that. But they're very, they're craftsmen in what they do. He called me and said, Jack, I don't know who else to call. Can you help me? The state has audited me, and they say I owe them $17,000. He said, I don't have $17,000. So I had a friend of mine, we called, and we, got, we went down, and we talked to him, an accountant, a lawyer, and they showed up. And we had the person who did the audit. Now, in fairness to this state worker, that person didn't understand the rules that the legislative body had passed out any more than the rest of us. She just said, I'm following it. And, and I said, okay, that's fine, but what do we do here? Well, we looked at this thing, and we got it down to where the man only owed $1,500. And I thought, but here's the travesty of that event. Yeah, we had to go through that. But this man is fourth out of four employees that he has. He spent 80 hours collecting data for the state government to defend him something that he didn't do wrong when he could have been building and working in his business. And I thought, how sad. It's jobs. We, we just took away from you and I. You couldn't buy his product because he didn't make it for two weeks. The second uh, thing was, and this just happened uh, a week ago today, and it was right here in Washington. The other one was in St. Clair. A man come up to me, and he, he, he went from bulging veins and a red face. He's red as, red as your jacket. And to tears. And, and he says, I don't care about state sovereignty. I don't care about cap and trade. I don't care about health care. I need a job. I can't feed my family. In the 26th senatorial district, I did the numbers. We have 13% and then people want to know why I'm pushing jobs. How do you do that? I'll tell you how to do that. You get government out of the way. You get them out of the way. You make these, you make these regulations that some guy just said he owed 17,000 and he only owed 1,500. You get rid of those regulations so they can understand. This guy, does, he's just like us. He, he didn't want to pay his taxes. He just didn't know how. The second thing that you do if you want to create jobs is you ask industry to come in here and you make it so that they understand we're going to be friendly to what you want to do and make it better. You want to, let's talk right about here in Washington. And I talked to Guy Metcalf about this. Guy's running from there. There's some others running, but that bridge here in Washington was repaired. When I was a state representative, I was chairman of the Joint Committee on Homeland Security. What does that mean, joint committee? As chairman, we had House of Representative members and we had senators in it for the entire state. I was the chairman of that committee. We had money appropriated to replace that bridge to make it four lanes. You know why? Because it was considered a security risk to get across the Missouri River with help from Jeff City and Kansas City in the event of a disaster on the eastern side of the state. Because we figured that if either it's man-made or a natural disaster, the Daniel Moon Bridge and the Blanchett Bridge are too big, notwithstanding an earthquake, if you will. But if we could get four lanes. But I, I left it and I couldn't get the money out of, I couldn't get the 11 million out of Homeland Security before I left the, left the job and it went away. But we could have had it. And that's jobs building a bridge that we really need. So jobs are extremely important. People aren't working. And their kids are hungry and they can't go to college. And they can't make a car payment. And the home has been here because they stay don't care about the rest of it. We've got to put them back to work. And I was down in Jeff City today as you go along. And that seems to be the buzzword now. It's jobs. Well, hello. Yeah. The second thing that is that is uh, I'm very frustrated with that I'm going to do something about, and I'm going to, if I can get elected, I 
is take these tax codes for the state and stop taxing people on their taxes. We did it uh, when I was down there for the, for the veterans. If you had a retirement, we weren't going to take it. We were not going to tax that up for state. We did it for Social Security. We got we did that. We got that passed through. Stop that tax taxes on your income that you. It's taxes you already paid. We shouldn't be taxing it again. The federal government, I can't control that. We'll take that on, you know, with some votes, votes later. But so this tax has got to come down. We can't sustain this burden. My mother is 85 years old. I am the executive of the state. I've got the experience to understand. And she grew up in the Great Depression. Folks, she told me that her one of her greatest Christmases when she was eight years old was an orange and a candy cane in her sock. I mean, I've seen people today who just throw those away when I go on the trips. That was her big day. And she is worried after she she and my father made their family fortune that the government's going to take it. It'll stay in the world. And we've got to reassure our seniors that's not going to happen. And uh, so we've got to stop this taxes. And the final thing that I want you, if you don't hear another word I say tonight, this is what I want to leave you with. The federal government is encroaching on states' rights. And I am a firm believer in the Constitution of the United States, the Tenth Amendment. But let me warn you, my friends. I've seen it. The state giveth and the state can take away just like the federal government. You want an example? It'll be a year next month when the state of Missouri was taking your license plate number if you had a full life, a veteran sticker, or a conservative sticker, and they got caught. Why would they do that? They, are, they wanted to take away your personal liberties. They wanted your name in the government, or they could say, Jack Jackson has a brain sticker on him. He's pro-life, and we got to watch this guy. He could be a terrorist. The veterans were terrorists. Group, give me a break. You know, most of us can't even get in our uniforms anymore, let alone be a terrorist. <laughs> I tell this story uh, pretty much a while back. I went to my uniform on. I ran upstairs. Guy, I appreciate this. I ran upstairs. I had that squeeze shirt, and I told my wife, I said, well, honey, it still fits. She said, put it away. You were just a fat captain. <laughs> but it's your personal liberties and freedoms that if I can be your next state senator, I'm going to defend beyond anything else. Because that is the right you have as a citizen of this state and of this nation. And I will not allow someone to take that away from me just because it's a state's rights. Because they'll make laws and pass laws that will restrict you just like anyone else. And it doesn't have to. And then finally, I'll, I'll leave you with this. You can some questions if you want questions. I'll leave you with this. If I am lucky enough to become your next state senator, I will answer to you, the people. You hear that all the time, and, and what do I mean by that? I've heard some representatives and people that I've worked with, that I went in with, that have changed. They say, well, they elected you elected them to vote their conscience. No, you elected them to vote your conscience. And that's the difference. Uh, and you can't let your ego get in the way. I tell everybody, first of all, it took an act of Congress to make me an awesome gentleman. It took 33,000 people as a state representative to be honorable. I haven't done either one on my own. So if I get down to Jeff City and someone says, there's Senator, hey, Senator, I'm probably not going to run around. I didn't turn around and holler, I haven't been a representative of Or there's the honorable, I didn't turn around. But if you holler, hey, Jack, I'll turn around. There are not very many of those in the building. <laughs> <laughs> so I will uh, vote your conscience. Now what we need tonight is this is a good turnout, a good start. I need your help. I need you to... Get a hold of me. If I've got to be somewhere, if Jackie says, hey, come down here and speak to my group or this group, let me know. I'll be there. Uh, let me know if I, if, uh, if you want to help put up a yard stack. And uh, one of the greatest blessings tonight was someone, it was your wife, wasn't it? She left and she said, I can't stay. I'm going to church and we'll pray for you. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. We'll win with that.